to another episode of I'm in a Car, and I have the honor and privilege of, of driving uh, Garrett Smith around with me today. Thank you so much for doing this. So, oh, thanks for having me. Um, not a lot of people know this, some do, but Garrett is the magician behind I'm in a Car, and the person who's responsible for editing everything, posting everything, making it all look awesome, and bringing it all to life. So thanks so much for all your help in making this a reality. Oh yeah, my pleasure. Awesome. Uh, so we're doing a, a, another, I guess a kind of a test run, because we're, we're, we're setting up, we set up the new rig. Uh, we did one last week in, in Stefan's car, but this is the first one we're doing in the Subaru, and it looks pretty, pretty As you bad. can tell I, by the car seat. <laughs> the kids seats yeah. back there. Uh, so we, uh, we're gonna take a quick drive, and I figured we could kind of touch on two topics. Um, and one would be around just the idea of leveraging video for, for entrepreneurs. But then the other thing is around just like your experience at Intrigue. So before we jump into it, uh, you want to give the audience a quick little rundown of where you've come from and what you're up to sure, these days? Sure, cool. This is my turn to do uh, yeah, you've to seen do a couple summary. Of these. Yeah, yeah, I kind of have an idea of how it goes. So yeah, my name's Garrett Smith. Um, I was born and raised in Guelph. And right now I'm uh, studying at the University of Guelph, um, studying marketing management, which is kind of fitting for what I'm doing now. And uh, originally, uh, when I was thinking about school, my my plan was was to go to film school. Um, I in high school I, I took a uh, communications technology class, got my hands on a camera and some editing software, and was just messing around in class with friends and really took a liking to it um, and so that was kind of where my my mind was set was was going to film school somewhere yeah and uh, things didn't really work out that way um, but you know it all kind of worked out in the end I, I ended up choosing uh, Guelph for marketing because I figured you know if, if I don't get in um, to school for for film at least I can go and take marketing and hopefully uh, you know stay stay up to date with with film and keep my uh, skill set sharp and yeah. then hopefully apply what I am learning at university in terms of marketing and, and apply that um, to my skill set with with video production and, and stuff like that so um, I'm going into my final year um, at the U of G oh, yeah and uh, yeah I've um, been at Intrigue for the last since January. Um, started my internship and sticking around for the summer. So yeah, yeah um, that's basically a, a brief synopsis of of what I've been up to in the last little while. And Garrett in some I sort am. of large nutshell. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> video production. That's kind of yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. great. And didn't you do uh, summer company last summer? Yep, yeah, I did summer company um, for. It started off sort of as a. Um, as a personal venture, it was um, more for um, my business was called Garrett Smith Film and Photography, right. and so I was doing that and doing um, doing weddings and stuff like that. That was sort of my my pitch to to summer company, um, and then as I started progressing and uh, getting more business and stuff, um, I sort of thought it, it would um, make more sense and just as far as workload went um, it made more sense to uh, have somebody help me out and I, ha I had a buddy of mine that I played hockey with all through my uh, through my childhood and and growing up uh, we were on the same hockey team and yeah. and we had actually f kind of fallen out of touch and just of course, through the power of social media, I think I was just perusing Facebook one day and saw that he was doing um, real estate videos or, or something like that, and somehow he had some involvement in, vi in video production. So I reached out to him, and he was going to Guelph, you know, the University of Guelph, and so I reached out to him and asked him if he uh, wanted to get together and have a coffee and talk about video production or whatever, and long story short, we ended up working together and starting our own video production business together and and that was all started through summer company and which is awesome yeah yeah it was and it was funny because like when I was looking into intrigue I, I saw that was sort of the the beginnings of intrigue with summer company and I'm like wow oh, yeah we yeah, yeah it was I get uh, then it was the Guelph Wellington Business Enterprise Center mm -hmm. and now I think it's called something else I think it's the Guelph Business Center. yeah yeah 
Um, but anyway, that's that's really cool. So you you dipped your toes into entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. which is amazing. And then went back to school. Yep. And then in January we had the opportunity to start working together, and uh, you came on with like, kind of the big purpose at the beginning was just I'm in a car. Yeah. And now that's translated into more. So what are you up to these days? Yeah. That intrigue. Yeah. So uh, I'm, uh, I still have my duties with uh, handling the I'm in a car stuff, but Which I appreciate like nothing else for sure. But um, but I've also been able to now kind of expand more into intrigues, actual video. Uh, production side of things yeah. um, so I started working with James who's who's no longer around but man that guy is uh, one smart cookie no and, and uh, very talented and very nice I just can't say enough about the guy and he uh, he really um, you know showed me the ropes as far as you know what to do on a on a client shoot and how to interact with clients and the whole thing, and um, so myself and and Veronica learned a lot. And now Veronica is kind of taking taking the reins, and I'm, you know, helping out uh, doing you know everything from from setup and, and shooting and and editing, and yeah. yeah, it's it's just amazing. It's it's exactly what I I had hoped for um, when I had the idea of. Um, marketing as a consolation prize you know uh, instead of uh, film school this is what I had envisioned myself doing so here you are yeah yeah exactly here you had a busy June like there was shoots like every yeah couple of them every week yeah yeah exactly and like yeah it was every day that I was uh, on set I was like wow this is you know this is what I enjoy doing and it's it's uh It's very nice to like, you know, uh, I remember the idea was stressed to me a lot when I was um, thinking about, uh, you know, applying to university and stuff that, you know, you have to do something you love, you know, make sure you do something you love. And I was very scared when I was hearing that because I wasn't really sure that I knew what I loved to do yet or like what was I going to commit to, you know, for the rest of my life. And it was very intimidating Straight and, up. and I'm just very like happy to, to, to be doing exactly that, which is, you know, doing something I, I love and, and I'm very fortunate that it kind of worked out that way. But, uh, but yeah, it was very, very scary to, to take the plunge. So let's walk through that then for a quick second to help other people because I've heard this from lots of mm. people. Oh yeah, I'm that, sure. You know, deciding what they're gonna do for their career for the rest of their life, trying to identify what they're passionate about mm-hmm. before they make those types of decisions. Mm-hmm. What kind of process did you go through, or lessons did you learn that you could share with somebody to to help them through the, the same thing? Yeah, and I think this is something that I was also told, and it's hard to listen to at the time but it's like you know things change and and you're you're you know I I have heard from people who are 50 that they don't know what they want to do yet you know like when they grow up right exactly (laughs) and so and I always um was sort of hesitant to take that as an answer but I think that's the truth because you know when I was in my first year I didn't know what I wanted to do and now I have a much better idea and I'm, um, I have a much better grasp on, on where, where I'm headed, right. but I don't, nothing's set in stone. Right. And so, um, what I'm doing in five years may be totally different. I don't know. Um, and so I think it's just kind of, um, you know, kind of cliche, but like go with the flow. It's, uh, there's never one, um, straight path and you know there's lots of of loops and you know curves and ups and downs and just kind of ride it out and that's what I did and it's working so far so yeah. yeah I think you touched on a really cool idea that um, just because you believe you're passionate about something today doesn't mean you have to stay passionate about that thing forever mm-hmm. and when you were talking about it it made me think of like when I was in high school um, I was looking for a job and when I was like 16 I was like what do I like to do and I was like I really love Subway like sandwiches 
Yeah. So I was like, I, I wanted to be a sandwich artist. I, and I straight up, so I didn't. I was like, I like, I love Subway. I'm gonna go get a job at a Subway. Uh-huh. And I, I mean, I took a lot of pride. I was a sandwich artist. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and, but I knew I wasn't gonna be passionate about that forever. Right. But I was like poor, so I got free subs. I got nice. to make great sandwiches mm-hmm. at a place I liked a lot at the time, and it was great. And then when I left there, I was thinking to myself, same type of thing. What do I, what do I really love to do? It's still in high school, and I love to drive cars. So I went and got a job at a rental car place where I nice. got to drive cars all day long. Mm-hmm. And it was a ton of fun. And not to say it was my career path, but it's kind of what you're saying is that, like, you know, go for what you want, go for what you love, mm-hmm. go for the passion, and then, you know, opportunity usually unfolds. So yeah, yeah, for I think sure. That's, that's a really cool lesson for others to, to hear that hey, you don't have to have all the answers. Just, mm-hmm. you know, follow or pursue your passions, which is yeah. great. So flipping it then to Intrigue, uh, you've been in the company six months. Mm-hmm. What uh, what kind of lessons or things have you learned uh, at Intrigue or what kind of things in the culture would you want to share with somebody that you've just been like, hey, that's really cool or something well, you didn't know about? Well, definitely uh, my my goal or, or what I was uh, really looking for when I, when I applied for the internship was just to see the inner workings of a legitimate marketing company. Um, you know, I, I was doing kind of, I was running the show as far as, you know, I, I, I learned, you know, a bit from school. Sure. Um, I'm yeah. sure my, my m- mom would like to hear me say I learned a ton from school, so sure, I learned a ton from school. <laughs> uh, and then I started when I, you know, was doing the summer company thing and, and just trying to, to do things on my own, I really, I didn't know what I was doing, right? Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I really wanted to get some some experience in, a, in an, an established company and and see, you know, what all, what all went on behind this curtain of marketing, right? right? And that was, I think, the, the biggest eye-opener for me was that, there is so much that goes into this and there's so many like different areas and at intrigue especially so many talented people um that all work together to to make this finished product you know this uh campaign for clients and you know thinking about my uh very s- simplified idea of what marketing was before I got there uh, to understanding a-, a bit better what it is now. It's kind of worlds apart. Yeah. Um, cool. But it's really it's it was it was honestly really amazing to to see you know uh, the the breadth of of talent and knowledge and skill that one. Um, goes into intrigue, but just I assume it, it would be you know pretty similar at at other marketing companies, just in the sense of like web design, graphic design. There's um, a lot of moving parts. Yeah, a ton of moving parts, and you know it, they all have to to work together um, to make things function big time. So yeah. And so then flipping that switch a little bit uh, with regard to the culture at intrigue. Has there been anything that stuck out to you uh, in your time in your time with us? For sure, um, definitely. Just the uh, the attitude of the people. Um, you know, it, before uh, getting like this job, I mean, my previous jobs had, you know, I was working at a factory for a little while and sure, yeah, worked yeah. at a grocery store and stuff like that. So, the culture is is very different, um, and I think you know a big part of that is because the people there um, love what they do and they love who they're working with and they understand that there's a, a purpose to what they're doing um, you know not not saying um, you know stacking skids doesn't have its purpose in, sure. in the world but you know as far as um, this this group of, of people who um, yeah, love what they do and understand that we are, you know, empowering leaders to strengthen communities. Um, that's definitely a, a great thing. And, and um, 
like just leader building for example like when I started I thought that was just the coolest thing was there's all this uh, all this material um, that you get to read and, and learn in an effort to improve yourself because you know and, and in the material that like I was reading you know 15 laws or start with why and it's very easy and I noticed this with myself to get um, to stagnate and right. and um, if you don't have a goal in mind or, or reason for you to progress it's very easy to just kind of take your foot off the gas and, and chill you know sure. and be comfortable yeah and so it's very like just that um, you know coming in on Monday morning and, and knowing that okay now like I can share some of the stuff that I've learned over the past week and hear from others and and uh, just know that um, everybody around me um, is passionate about improving themselves and 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 bringing that to the table and, and sharing that and yeah so I mean I, I could go on about the culture for <laughs> for a while I'm sure you could I'm sure everybody in the company could because that's what really makes it so great is is just the environment like, yeah that's cool man. I, I actually look forward to coming into work every day and I can't say that about really anything else that I've done what a crazy concept today yeah yeah wow, that's cool. eh? um, so then full circle going back to video mm -hmm. um, well first before that I really appreciate the, the words right I mean uh, it means a lot to hear from somebody who's been in the organization for six months mm. I mean, we didn't prep this right no so, no uh, to yeah. hear your Off perspective is, yeah. is great um, so going back to video you know, and in your experience of what you've been filming and what you've seen with even I'm in a car mm -hmm. and, and the feedback we're receiving using social, what do you what do you want to say to entrepreneurs out there that are looking to, you know, market their business a little better, attract new customers, engage their current customers about the value of video? Um, I would say video is a great way to um, tell a story and uh, share some emotion and... and um, relate to customers quickly um, you know we are in a very um, information now kind of world and uh, video is is about as close as you can get to shoving information into somebody's brain as quick as possible right yeah. rather than having them read or or whatever read a blog post or or whatever so it's a uh, it's a great way to to tell a story and there's um, a lot of different ways as I've come to learn to leverage video Big time. Um, you know with social media and retargeting and and all this stuff that I still don't fully understand but sometimes I peek over at Corey's desk and see what she's up to but <laughs> but yeah so there's uh, there's a lot of ways to if you have uh, a, a well-produced video and have your story told properly or or just have whatever message it is that you're trying to get out have that um, captured in in a professional way um, it can be very beneficial to your company yeah big time and I don't know if you've noticed uh, in LinkedIn the news feeds are all video now mm -hmm. uh, Facebook I mean it's been like that for a year plus oh yeah huge um, you know vi uh, Instagram is you know great platform for leveraging video. They just started IGTV. Did you see that? No, I didn't. They're trying to like compete with YouTube. That's cool. Yeah, crazy, eh? Yeah, so I mean, video is uh, definitely not going anywhere. If anything, it's becoming the now oh, yeah. and, and the norm. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, Gary, you mentioned the idea of a properly produced, well-produced video, and that doesn't ha that doesn't mean it has to be $30,000. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a Hollywood budget or $100,000. Mm -hmm. It could be um, a, a solid investment, but the thing that you want to consider is A, from my perspective, how can you chunk things out so you have multiple pieces of content? This is one of the things that we do, and Garrett does a lot of, the, especially in June, where we do like frequently asked questions mm -hmm. and interview our clients on subject matter as a subject matter expert, so that we can do a film a, a day of filming, but end up with like you know eight to twelve, uh, thirty to forty five second clips, mm -hmm. which is like really powerful if you consider what you were referring to before what like Corey does. And I won't get into the technical right. components of it all, but the idea is you can build audiences on social media based mm -hmm. on who's watched your videos. Same thing with YouTube. So Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, you can you can build audiences, meaning that you can target people that have watched one of your videos or two right. of your videos or mm -hmm. five of your videos and provide them with different offers based on how engaged they are with the business. Mm -hmm. So. 
Uh, I mean, I could go on for hours and yeah, hours and hours yeah. about the whole thing. You can get into like how, like what time they watched for, and yeah, yes, yeah, so it's I'm amazing. The, I'm the same way. I don't exactly know what's going on, but yeah, I'm like, wow, that's intense. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and the feedback we've received from just doing these I'm in a cars yeah. has been unbelievable. For sure. You know, the feedback we get in the community, and even people reaching out to want to be a part of the show. Mm-hmm. So you've been you've been a huge part of that. So thank you for everything you're doing it's there. Been a blast. So if you could. Uh, tell somebody a little something about Intrigue if they were considering working or wanting to come work at Intrigue what would you what would you tell them about either why they might want to consider it or, or maybe what they maybe they shouldn't consider it if they don't want to be part of something or whatever I don't know anything yeah tell I can keep it very concise um, if you want to stop waking up dreading going to work this is your place because <laughs> I I have no you know um I want to get to work and, and work, so um, it's a great, great place to be, and, and I've thoroughly enjoyed my, my time here, so. And so have we, my friend. Yeah. It's been awesome, and it will continue to be awesome. So uh, thank yeah. you for doing this and Woo-hoo! being on the other side of the camera. Yeah, yeah. All right, see you First guys. First time for everything. Cool. Peace.